What is up, tasty people? It's your boy, Tasty Penguin here. We are back today, and we're not in Poké Central. As you see, this is my desktop. I've been seeing quite a bit of messages on one particular thing that I do need to address right here, and and, and I need to help you guys out with. Um, it's not going to be super detailed, but there's a lot of people asking in my videos and putting up uh, um, suggestions on the Discord about Blender and not knowing, you know, how exactly to use it or anything like that, and they want a better detailed tutorial, so I figured I would help some people out here. Now, this isn't going to go super in-depth. This is not going to show you absolutely everything you can use for Blender. I'll just show you the basic things that I do when Whenever I create skins and, and you know things that can help you out as far as blender goes because I know blender is a super complex well I mean for some people it's super complex and it's really really hard to use for a lot of people so this is gonna be a tutorial for that this is the only things that you're going to need is the decoded pack for the Pokemon models the OG skins and blender here so these are the only three things that you're going to need to be able to use this now if you want these two things right here uh, you could refer back to the video I will link it down below for the first video that we created it will have everything linked in the description that you can download these at you can also find the video on the Poké central discord linked in, in the announcement section for the new skin con competition that's uh, happening right now but with that being said the only other thing you need is a blender now if you guys have any other things that you need to know about blender that is past this tutorial that i'm going to be doing a very short tutorial here i will leave down below a link to the discord for the official blender team uh there's a big community over there a lot of people that will help you out with any other questions past what i'm going to show you here so let's hope uh let's hop into this hopefully i can help you guys out but we're going to launch up blender right here now if you're new to blender when you first see this it's going to be very very you know complex and stuff but we're going to skip through the nitty gritty and just tell you exactly what to do i'm not going to you know cut corners or, or i mean i'm just i'm just not going to show you absolutely everything okay first thing you need to do is you see this box right here now in order to turn your screen you think click but no that highlights things you don't need to do that right click does that so it's middle mouse button to spin your screen that was the first triumph that I had to overcome. Now, this next thing is click this box right here because this box is your beginning model, but you don't need it anymore. So it's going to be up there. What you're going to do is right click that box and delete it. You're going to get rid of it. Have a fresh slate here. Now, with that decoded box that you have installed and stuff, and after you've got it all done, you're going to go down in here into file and import source engine. Once you get that in there, you're going to go in here and you're going to find the decoded folder that you downloaded, which will be on your desktop. If you go in here, there it is right there. You're, now, inside this decoded folder, you're going to have every single one of the Pokemon that you're looking for, all the things. Now, you're just going to search for what you're going to be doing. Now, I'm going to do a specific Pokemon today because there is a lot of people asking me one specific question. So, I'm going to pick Ray. We're going to do Rayquaza real quick. I'm not going to make a full skin or anything like that, but we're going to open up Rayquaza. Now, we have a Ray open up right here. Now, I'll show you here in a minute why we're doing Ray, but as you see, it looks broken purple it's green it's got all these dots on it now the first thing that we need to do is right over here on the right it says rayquaza skeleton we need to hit that little eyeball next to it to get rid of that skeleton to get rid of that annoying look to it there we go now how do we get the texture onto ray to make it look correct well that's actually pretty pretty simple you're going to click on ray here and on the right hand side all these confusing panels over here you're just going to go down here to the one that looks like a circle with a checkerboard inside of it you're going to click that one it's going to pop up this now as you see there's materials here but they say none this is what i do okay i hit the x on it and then i hit new looks like it didn't change anything but it actually does okay now down here on the base color thing you're gonna see it says white and if you click on it you can change the color but you don't want to do that you're gonna click on this little circle to the right of it down here you're gonna find image texture you're gonna click that now whenever you click image texture it's gonna have two new options here you're gonna click open and this is where you're gonna find the skins that you downloaded from the other video as well so mine are gonna be on the disk de or desktop and we are going to go to where is it where is it what did I just renamed it so I can play okay pick someone OG skins that's what I renamed it to so inside here you're gonna go through assets pick someone textures and Pokemon and here are all the original skins for Pokemon so what we're gonna do is we're gonna find Ray and we're gonna find the original Ray not the Mega Ray 
and we're going to apply this now it doesn't look like it changed anything does it now that's because up here at the top you're on layout there's layout modeling everything you can sculpt this stuff out but it's not going to work inside of um our our server currently if you remodel a pokemon to look completely different it's not going to work what you're going to be worrying about is texture paint here we just added the texture so you're going to go into texture paint paint now as you see we can see our image on the right or on the left and over here on the right as you see it's kind of broken still we can kind of see the color on it but this is the reason why i chose ray now we're gonna we're gonna hide this for just a second the reason why i showed ray is because for a lot of textures people are getting confused why there's pink on it now it's 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 very hard to explain why there's pink on there but i'm going to show you a little bit of a, of a fix on it over here you see we have the material one that we changed but down below some of them have multiple materials here this one says none so what we're going to do is the exact th same thing that we did earlier we are going to grab that second texture down here on the circle see on the circle down here with the thing we're going to click none on that second texture and we're going to change it again we're going to hit the x we're going to hit new on the base color circle image texture and then we're going to hit open and we're going to find the exact same one so we're going to go back into this folder we're going to hit ray and we're going to reopen this back up and as you see it completes it now you're going to want to select back onto the material one but now we have the completed texture and that is completely awesome now this is the part where you guys can choose what you want to do now over here you can either use your thing and paint on it and it will just show up over here or if you're the type of person that wants to draw over here you can it doesn't matter where you draw at as long as you save it <laughs> that's how it's going to be now as you see there are some of the um some of the some of the textures and some of the skins that like if you draw in a place it looks good but then when you hit certain places it's going to multiply as you see it's multiplying right there that's just something you have to deal with that's how the model is created now once you find a texture that does that you just got to find a way to work with it that's what i had to do and that's what everybody has to do there's no way to actually like work around it it actually just does it it's because there are uv mapping i'm not going to go detailed but all these little teeny tiny lines you see through here that's uv mapping if i draw like right here that's not going to show up on ray that's because it's not inside of the uv mapping i just drew there so that landed right here under here so I'm going to get rid of those. But yeah, the UV mapping is literally the grid that is around the 3D texture that is causing uh, us to know on this, you know, this image right here, what colors are going where. Now, some of the places, as you see, are going to be completely complex and layered over top of each other and very, very, very dense. So that's why it's causing it to duplicate and stuff. But it all works out in the end. You just gotta be very creative with it. Now, another thing that you guys can also do, if you just, you know, you're not very good at drawing and you just, you want to do, you know, do something cool on you, you can go down here into this texture thing, okay? Now, what I've done is I went into like Photoshop or GIMP. I've, I use GIMP a lot. Um, you can create your own little images or PNGs Gs or anything like that that you want to that is non-copyright and you can apply them now that how you do this is you go into this actual checkerboard at the bottom you hit new and you're gonna hit open so anytime you hit open on this you're just gonna find you know any image that you've created so as you've seen on some of the stuff that I've created I have some stuff uh, saved in the background that I've created here these are PNGs that I created for the champion texture the champion text all this stuff now if you want to grab this stuff all you have to do is go into where I'm at double click it you're gonna find it and it's going to be there now in order to find it over here you've got to click the single image and move it over into uh i think it's child movie image sequence i don't know where did it go okay i got a little confused there it's been a minute since i have done this but i remember now after you get your image added inside of here now what you're going to do is you're going to go back up here to the tool things on the right this is back where all your main things that you've already added is and you're going to scroll down here to texture it's going to be closed out but you're going to go to texture and that's where your image pops up at then you're going to go down here to tiled and you're going to switch this to stencil now what that's going to do is it's going to make a pop up on your screen here as you see it doesn't show up unless you hover over it so now it's on your screen and you should be able to use it anytime you want to now you should be able to right click it to move it around middle click to move your screen so anywhere you want to place this you can you can move your screen around you can bring it in here and if say i wanted to put it like i don't know right here all right we're gonna make this bigger and there we go now as you see some of the places on some of the pokemon are going to be very pixelated but it applied it 
it's right there now you're gonna find other areas on the pokemon that are gonna look a lot better maybe i don't know right here does that look better yes does look better they're gonna be different areas uh you can't really control the the resolution of each uh, specific area because it all depends on the uv mapping and stuff like that but you guys can find the ways that works with you now i'm gonna close this out really quickly and we'll get on to the next part of this Okay, now the next part of this is going to be the basic tools. I'm just going to be showing you guys basically what these in texture paint mode, what basically these do. Now, you know how most things work in all these things but like 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 feel all this stuff you, you guys will know generally what this means but there's some controls that are completely different so as you guys know middle mouse click turns you around okay left click is going to draw right click is not really going to do anything you can zoom in and out with your mouse wheel now what if i want to be able to zoom in but see the face a little bit easier so what you're going to do with that is you're going to hold shift and then hold or yeah hold middle mouse button to drag it around to move it anywhere you want it to be now, in order to do, uh, you know, fine tune zooming, you can hold control and go forward and back instead of doing this jerky, like in and out, just in case you jump a little bit too much. Yeah, but yeah, yeah hold shift uh, and middle mouse button to move, hold control, left control and middle mouse button to zoom in and out a little bit easier. Now, um, there is a way to, you know, up the size of your brush with my current mouse. If you have like a Logitech G502 or something, your middle mouse button will go left and right. And this is an automatic thing but there are ways to change the size of it which is going to be over here on the right there is a radius it says 22 picks as you see when I hit my button it changes but you can literally just like go in here and change the number anytime you want to and the strength of it the strength of it is going to be how dark it's going to be so as you see I've got a big a big circle here and the strength is at hundred percent basically but if I take it all the way down it's going to be a very light shading so you guys can do gradients and shading into stuff now over here on the con or on the uh, color palette, you can switch your colors anytime you want to to color any color. Uh, let's get that strength back up. But yeah, you can do any color you want to, change it up, draw anything you want to. Now, if you want to save colors so you can make sure you don't lose them, there's a color palette right here underneath this. Now, if you click new on this, it's gonna create a palette. Then color that you're currently on, say you wanted to save red. You're gonna hit this when you get over red, and then if you wanna save green, you're gonna hit the plus again. It's gonna to continue to save these things. Now, if you click one and you don't want it anymore, you hit the minus, it's gonna be gone. So that's how you can save a color palette so you don't lose the exact gradients that you guys are using. Next tool, um, I don't use the soften tool. I don't use smear or clone. Um, the fill thing I normally do whenever I'm doing the uh, champion textures, I will literally take and I'll make like a soft gray and I'll just start off like this. This is exactly how I start off with the champion textures and then I'll draw it on by hand afterwards, which is uh, it's a little bit more complicated, but if you're trying to get a full detailed version of your own thing, this is the best thing to do. Um, as far as all the controls and stuff go, I believe this is the only things that you guys are going to need. Now we're gonna get on to how to save your work. Okay, so an important thing, if you're wanting to take a break and not finish this up right now, up here at the top left, you can hit file and you can go down to uh, save as, okay? Now that's gonna save the blender model and picture together of what you've created. And uh, if you've saved the image to the desktop, you need to keep it there because it'll load it whenever you try to reload this. But as you see, if I hit save as, like I'm gonna first go in here, I'm gonna paint it white so you can see, and then we're gonna hit save as okay and this is going to have a name on it but we're going to save it to the desktop real quick and we're going to do uh let's change the name here ray test okay dot blend so it's going to save it to the desktop now as you see on the desktop we have the ray test dot blend now that's all good and well in it but it won't save exactly because you need to save this image on the left right here as well this is what pokey central uses to put into their files so in order to save this image over here under the file and edit and all this stuff down below there's a view and there's an image you click on that image and click save as you can make sure that this is called uh, Rayquaza.png and save it to your desktop for an extra thing. If you save it into the original folder that you got it from, it's going to overlay it and you're going to lose the original Rayquaza texture. So I'd recommend going to your desktop, saving it there, and you can, you know, replace it later. So we're going to go in here, desktop, Rayquaza.png, save image as, there we go, it's saved to the desktop. Now if we close this out, 
Uh, yeah, we're gonna save it. Okay, so if we close this out, as you see, the old one uh, got overlapped, but here it is. This is what it is, and this is the image for it. We have the image here. Now, if this image was to be put into a new folder, as you see, I, this is just showing you guys. If we had this without saving that image, this is what's going to happen. You're gonna have a pink Rayquaza. But since this image is still here on the desktop, if we open this, it should go back to where we were. If this will open, if it'll open, Come on. I don't know what's happening. There we go. There we go. It loaded back into where we were. So that's how you save your progress and all of that stuff. Now, hopefully I was able to help some of you guys out with using Blender. I know this is a very basic, basic, um, you know, tutorial on how to use Blender, but I'm sure that you guys, if you guys need any more in-depth uh, tutorials or anything like that, you guys can find some help within the community of Poké Central. There's a lot of people that use it a lot over there. I was just wanting to help some of the people that absolutely have no idea how to even start using Blender. And in my opinion, Blender makes everything a lot easier for whenever you're trying to create textures for Pokemon, especially with this upcoming Halloween event that we are doing. Hopefully this gives some people a little bit of an edge on, you know, being able to create the Pokemon that they dream of making, but just don't have a tablet to make it with a Photoshop or anything like that and want to see a 3D model. If that's my opinion. I love having a 3D model over just a flat image. It helps me out, but there are a lot of people that love the flat image a lot. So, I mean, I mean, hopefully I was able to help you guys out. Like I said, if you guys need any more help, there's a community here that have a lot of people that know exactly what they're doing too and i'm gonna leave down below the blenders official discord you guys can go over there i get help over there all the time they help me out as well so hopefully uh, if you guys need anything they can help you out and i'll also leave a link to the other video that you guys can find on how to get the pokemon og skins and the decoded files it'll all be in the description and stuff like that and if you need help importing those and anything i'm sure that the discord can help you out now if you guys like this video and if this did help you out let me know down below and drop that like down there if you're new to the channel and you haven't already make sure you sub to not miss out on any more episodes we will be back with pixelmon really really soon we got some big stuff coming up and uh, if you haven't joined up with us on the pixelmon server for you know uh pocus central check all the links down below they'll be there we would love to see you there but as i always say guys i love your faces and may the dubstep penguin be with you peace out and stay safe guys god bless